when you apply for a job in the finance industry you would expect to have some sort of experience some education some certifications like you know you might have done a degree in finance or you might have worked in the banking sector or you might have worked in the insurance company or running a finance team in a corporate environment right that is the minimum requirement to be able to work in a finance industry as an expert but not in Canada because in order to become a finance minister in Canada you don't need all of this you think I'm joking well listen to this um you know trying to be I, I, I want to be respect uh, Freeland because she is the finance minister but I don't know why she's the finance minister she has no experience at this and she's never even run a bank I mean I don't know I, mean, I, I don't know why she's there and she's totally unqualified and here she is making policy mistakes left and right and here's a bad one and this costs Canadian this is very Canada it's very expensive to make mistakes like this the damage she's doing now will be felt if it doesn't get repaired immediately for decades and so bad managers do a lot of damage and she is a very bad underqualified manager and I, I, I don't mean any disrespect I'm just saying why can't I have a real finance minister why can't I have someone who actually was involved in financial services in this country why do I have that and and she works for me I'm a taxpayer you have to think about in context of global competition in the G20 when you mess around with corporate tax rates um, Corporations are not people. They can move. Structures can move. And they will, and they'll contort themselves if all of a sudden they find a path of least resistance somewhere else. And so uh, I'm certainly involved in that. Most of the accounting firms here have been advising uh, their clients uh, over the last 90 days about all the, s the strategies we're doing to exit Canada, to sell assets here, uh, to pay taxes on them now and move them elsewhere. And so you're starting to see that migration of capital already. And, and I, I would argue that that's a policy mistake in, in terms of the competition data centers. We only have 8% of the data centers we need. So unfortunately, Canada is not participating in this explosion of data centers. These are $3.6 billion projects. And if you have hydropower, gas, or nuclear power, as you know, at least in Canada, we've got hydro, we've got gas, you should be getting your fair share of those projects, but you can't get permitted in this country. So they're going to North Dakota, West Virginia, Oklahoma, Texas. Those kinds of states are getting these massive sovereign wealth projects. And that's an area that you're investing in? The, yeah, I've, the, I'm the very excited sources. about it. We looked at Alberta, but unfortunately you can't get anything done there because the federal government controls the permitting of energy. And they haven't done anything, well, as you know, you can't get anything done. I don't want to be critical, but... We, it's just not worth your time when you can go to North Dakota get a permit in six weeks or in Oklahoma where they've got wind they've got gas and you're so you can service the Canadian market from just south of the border North Dakota and get the deal done a 3.6 billion dollar project just outside of Fargo with fiber optics should have been near Calgary and ain't gonna happen and that's I'm very critical of the Canadian uh, government, obviously, but I just I just watch it happen every day. All that money being diverted away from this country. It's Whether you like Kevin as a person or not, I think he is spot on in terms of criticizing the government policies and the bureaucracies that we have in this country. Listen, guys, like he's spot on, right? I'm not a political person. I'm not conservative. I'm not liberal, right? But I can see that the government policies are damaging Canadians. The Canadians' prosperity, the quality of life is being deteriorated because of the policy decisions that the government is taking. Like Kevin talked about the data center uh, investment. Uh, I was doing some research and I was shocked that a lot of countries outside North America are attracting billions of dollars in, the, in terms of data center investment. Malaysia is one of the top countries in the world right now getting billions of dollars from NVIDIA, Microsoft, Google uh, to build new data centers in the country to serve uh, that region's market. And you need basically three things to be able to attract capital for data center expansion. Cheap energy, talent pool, and the policies from the government to support that. We have the first two, cheap energy, talent pool, but we don't have efficient government processes in order to accelerate the permit process and attract the foreign capital in this country. So that is the problem Kevin is highlighting here. So if the government is not creating policies that can create an environment for foreign companies to come and then invest into this country, then people will just don't bother, right? They can service Canadian market from south of the border easily where they are happily investing into Kansas, you know, uh, and other U.S. cities because they have 
uh, cheap energy they have talent pool and they can always uh, you know cover Canadian market from that region and they have government providing policies and quicker process to issue the permit and move forward with the plan so that is the problem that we are seeing right now that the government has too much red tape too much bureaucracy which doesn't let anything happen in this country right we are seeing the jobs that are being produced in this country are all coming from public sector private sector has been shrinking in this country and in order to bring prosperity in canada to uh, improve the quality of life you have to grow the private sector because the private sector grows the real goods and services in this country which can produce gdp per capita which can bring a lot of capital and then you know improve our quality of life going forward until then we will not be seeing prosperity in canada unfortunately well, you let me know what you think about that. Put your comments down below. Let me know how are you protecting your finances, your investments. And if you need any help with regards to your state planning, your financial planning, your kids' education, let me know. I have a team of expert financial advisors. They can help you to build your portfolio with an expert advice free of charge. And you can thank me later. I'll see you in the next video. If you are an investor in the US and Canada or in Europe and you are considering investing into Dubai real estate market, this video is for you because we have a platform called Stake which allows you to invest into the residential real estate market and start earning rental income right away without going through a lengthy documentation process or coming up with a heavy down payment. Stake is built upon this the concept of crowdfunding so it is democratizing the entire investment strategy and, and allows you to own a single unit of the entire investment portfolio so you don't have to own the entire property right? you can be part of the pool that can actually own a piece of property a piece of real estate so that allows you to start with as low as 2000 dirhams and you can slowly ramp up so as you start investing into it you can not only own a bit of bit of real estate but you also get a portion of the rental income on monthly basis so it's a passive investment strategy diversifying your portfolio from traditional North American or European markets into Dubai which is hustling and bustling and growing very fast and allows you to build your wealth over time so so don't delay there is a link down there in the description if you click on this it will give you free 200 dirhams in your account right away to start with and you can thank me later